Let's begin the notice. This is a public hearing on the proposed budget for 2018 on Monday, November 27th at 6 p.m. at our wonderful town hall. And the first question I have was this properly noticed, Amy? The agenda has been properly noticed. Okay, we actually don't have an agenda, but you did post it. I did. So we're in good shape. There is no agenda for this meeting. What I will do is go through a review of the ex expenses and, and show you, or I should say show you, I will highlight any significant changes or observations that uh, might be informative. After I've done that, uh, we'll follow by a period of public comment on any items that someone would like to go back and discuss further. To begin uh, giving you that view from 20,000 feet, our year-over-year -year budget increase was uh, less than $5,000. So uh, just from a financial standpoint, uh, we've been as close to the belt as possible. Our actual mill rate, um, what you as a taxpayer will pay uh, per thousand, will increase 2.3 cents over the prior year. So uh, I think it's, uh, I think that's good news. It's obviously a small increase. Um, and we'll talk a little bit later about the total increase as it relates to the combined county, state, et cetera, uh, for both Sebastopol School District and Sturgeon Bay School District. So I'm going to start with expenditures. And as I indicated, I'm just going to touch on those things that are differences or perhaps uh, merit an observation or a comment. First one uh, underneath government expenditures as the clerk treasurer. We uh, are very pleased with the job that Amy has done for us, and we are going to be planning a 3.5% increase in her salary from last year to this year. Uh, the next item that we'll see an increase in our budget, unless I mention it's an increase, you can basically say that last, all the numbers we had from last year are the same, no increases. Under election poll workers, we will have an increase this year over last year from $3,000 to $7,500 an increase of $4,500, and obviously that's due to one thing, and that's more elections. Our office equipment budget is going from 500 to 1500 That's just got to do with how, much, how many documents we process and what goes on here in the office, cartridges, et cetera. Uh, so that basically summarizes the increases in that category. Under public safety, our fire protection, uh, we had a very slight increase. This is the first year that the city of Sturgeon Bay could increase our fire protection coverage. And it was based on a formula on their capital equipment. Uh, just to give you an idea of the increase, last year our costs were $347,050. And this year it's 347874 So a very moderate increase. This contract is fixed, I shouldn't say fixed, but pretty much limited to a minor increase through 2019, at which time we'll have to renegotiate our contract for coverage on fire protection. Uh, under public works, our road construction budget remains the same. It's been $200,000 and will continue to be $200,000. It is our hope to increase this once the payments have been finalized for the town hall and we will dedicate a portion of the money uh, from the room tax to road construction. Uh, we have 88 miles of roads. When I started on the town board, uh, we were able to pave four to five miles of roads a year. The costs were in the $40,000 category. Now we're between 100 and 125,000. Uh, this year we, were, we did about a mile and a quarter of new paving plus repairs. So if you said we, we could do two miles of paving a year with 88 miles. That means you would get your road paved, whether you like it or not, on a 44-year interval, <coughs> which obviously is not satisfactory. So we hope to put some of our funds towards that so that we can improve uh, road repair and construction and deal with that on a more timely basis. Snow removal, no change over prior years. This has been a tough one from year over year. Again, a comment that I, when I started, we were in the $40,000 category there. Now we're at $100,000. It was $100,000 in our budget last year as well. Obviously, we're at the throes of Mother Nature with respect to what we do in that category. Under culture and uh, recreation, our expenses as projected for next year under the boat ramp at Whitefish Bay are decreasing from $6,500 
to 2000 that's a decrease of $4,500. And under the Clark Lake beach and boat ramp, we're doing the similar reduction from 4,500 to 2,500. So a reduction of $2,000 in that category as well. This year we are putting money back in for newsletters, something we had not done in the past and we hope to restart that. So we have budgeted $2,500 to restart the newsletter and try and do that on a more timely basis. Otherwise all the other expenses in that category are basically the same. If you summarize that whole category, we'd be down $8,000. Under <coughs> capital outlay, uh, we have went through a process this year where we identified projects that we wanted to prioritize. We'll review those on an annual basis. We have decided to put some money aside each year to build a pot of funds so that when we need a replacement for a particular piece of equipment, whether it be a truck or a expensive lawnmower for the park or something here, <clears throat> excuse me, here for the building, we'll have the necessary funds to do that. One of the things that we have done this year because we put aside uh, $4,000 for cable equipment uh, capital and what we're thinking about here and would look forward to any input from anyone on, in the audience um, is we're contemplating making some changes that will enable you to see the same thing that the board is seeing as we go through a meeting. So we could uh, in theory have a whiteboard or projector and a screen that would show you the packet of information as we discuss it, it would be displayed on the screen so you and the audience could follow along, thereby making you a little bit more enlightened in terms of what's going on. We're looking at some other things that tie to that, but basically we're gonna put some money aside as a first step to try and possibly get there in the next few years. All right. um, one interesting uh, area in the areas of revenues, our shared revenues from the state are projected to decrease next year, which is kind of interesting because this was the first year that they've actually given us a road, uh, road aid increase, <laughs> but it looks like they may have taken it out of our shared revenues. So the two kind of offset one another, uh, but that decreases from 46,000 to 448, not that significant, but interesting based on where, they, uh, where they've been tracking with road aids. Um, under Town Park, we, we do get reimbursed by the school district, Sebastopol School District, for their use of the fields and the preparation and repair that we uh, undergo with them. We are going to be asking them this year for a slight increase from the $3,200 they have paid in the past to $3,500. Obviously, like everybody else, uh, we pay more for the products and services that we provide, and we ask them to share in that uh, as whatever possibility. Um, the next category was room tax receipts. This has been the one positive for the town in that as tourism increases, uh, our share of that tax uh, helps us pay for this building. Um, it has been significant in the last few years. This year we're anticipating collecting $87,000 at year end. There is one negative associated with this and that is that there's been a change in the legislation on how room tax dollars are collected and because um, of the way that Door County is set up by zip codes, it's possible that room tax dollars may be collected by zip codes and not <coughs> thereby not be easily distributed back to the correct municipality. So 54235, for example, covers Sturgeon Bay and Sevastopol. Uh, we could end up being lumped in there. That could be good news or bad news and similar situations throughout the county. So we don't know what the impact of that is. There has been feedback to the legislature on that not being the right kind of move, but there is the potential for us to actually see less <coughs> receipts in the ta room tax category. So those are actually the most significant changes um, in terms of an individual line item year over year. Uh, a couple other comments. Um, the lake shore on the east side of, uh, of the town. Uh, they did a, the appraisers did a reval based on home sales and there was a $21 million decrease in the assessed values of properties along the lake shore last year, which has a direct impact on our tax rate because obviously if the values go up, we in turn get an increase uh, by default. Um, this 
is offset, the $21 million reduction was offset by new construction. The way the state allows us to, to increase our budget is basically through one process only, and that is the growth in new construction. Whatever that dollar amount is, that uh, percentage is what we can increase. And typically, I think this year our total increase was 5000 some dollars, Amy? Right, yep. So uh, we're under that limit, but uh, it's a tough, uh, situation when the state controls what we can do with our budget and then at the same time you have a reval in an area and that's uh, takes a 21 million dollar decrease in your assessed value so those are the highlights um, if you're looking for anticipated tax dollars as it relates to your property tax bill if you live in the town of Sevastopol the tax rate all up, all in, including the school, NWTC, the county, et cetera, would be $10.26 per thousand. If you live in the Sturgeon Bay School District, it's $15.37 per thousand. And I know that Amy was looking at this a few minutes ago. I believe that's about a 25 percent, 25 cent decrease year over year in the tax rate. Is that correct? That's what we came up with, yep. yep. So uh, all up, all in, your tax bill should be less uh, with all the changes that have taken place and all the input from the different organizations, NWTC and the school. So that's the, um, that's the view from 20,000 feet. If you have any questions or would like to go back and talk about anything individually, please feel free to do that at this time. From thousands of people in the audience, does anybody have a question? That was a very nice recap, Mr. Chairman. Oh, thank you. No, you don't have a question. Do I have a question? You don't have a question. <laughs> she worked on the this budget. Would be the Let's... first meeting ever where I didn't have a question. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, if no one has any questions. Uh, we will close the public hearing for the proposed budget from 2018 mm -hmm. and we will proceed to the special town meeting at which point we will uh, ask you for your approval for the tax levy. Okay? All right. <coughs> All right, I'd like to call the order, call to order, the special town meeting for the town of Sevastopol for Monday, November 27th uh, at 6.15, actually following the public hearing on the proposed budget. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <laughs> well, we always uh, do introductions. Hopefully by now you all know us, but just, from, just in the event there's someone out there that doesn't who are watching us from TV land, let's start with the clerk treasurer. Amy Flock, Clerk Treasurer, County Road P. Tony Hand, Supervisor, Matthew Road. Chuck Ty, Supervisor, Bayshore Drive. Dan Wuffel, Chairman, Bark Road. Linda Waite, Supervisor, Bluff Court. John Stavnes, Supervisor, Whitefish Bay Road. Arlene Wuffel, Bark Road. Jim Nolan, President, 4501 Mori Lane. Steve Johnson, Arbor Lane. John Deal, 4451, Whitefish Bay Road. Thank you. Laddie, you're good. One sec. Laddie Chapman, Living Drive. Okay, the first course of action here is to approve the previous minutes from the 2017 budget meeting on November 2018 to 2016. And in this meeting, anyone is welcome to make a motion to do that. Does not necessarily have to be the board. I so move. 
I'll second it. All right, motion by Jim Nellen, second by Laddie Chapman to approve the minutes from the 2017 budget meeting, November 28, 2016. Uh, any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. The next order of business is to actually approve the resolution for the adoption of the town tax levy for 2017. Bear with me, I will read that. This is, and hopefully I have the numbers correct, resolution number one, 2017T for town, <coughs> adopt the tax levy for 2017 to be collected in 2018, whereas section 60.10, paragraph one, paragraph A of Wisconsin statutes authorizes the town electors of the town to adopt the tax levy at a town meeting of the electors and whereas a special town meeting of the electors of the town of Sevastopol has been called this 27th day of November 2017, and whereas the 2018 proposed budget as presented by the town board of supervisors projects a total expenditure of $1,126,437 with a general property tax levy of $658,784. Now, therefore, the special town meeting of the town of Sevastopol, Door County, Wisconsin, by a majority vote of the eligible electors voting on this 27th day of November 2017, duly assembled and voting, resolves and orders as follows. Be it resolved that the electors of the town of Sevastopol, Door County, Wisconsin, hereby adopt the town tax levy for 2017 to be collected in 2018 in the amount of $658,784 total tax levy, including debt. Adopted this 27th day, 2017, at a special town board meeting. Motion to approve. I'll make that motion. And second. Motion by Laddie, second by Jim Nellen. Number of town electors, all right, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried, thank you. So. Amy, you need to indicate the number of electors present. Correct. Okay. Reported this day. Ten. 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 Because I don't think Steve can. All right. Back up here for just a second. Are there any other submitted resolutions by anyone from the public? at this point in time. Hearing none, the next motion would be one to adjourn the special meeting. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, if uh, this is the proper time, I'd like to make that motion. Second it. Motion by Laddie, second by Tony, to adjourn the meeting. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Call to order the Board of Supervisors meeting for November 27th, 2017 at 7 p.m. Roll call to establish a quorum, please. Supervisor John Stavanis. Here. Supervisor Linda Waite. Here. Chairman Dan Wolfel. Here. Supervisor Chuck Tice. Here. Supervisor Tony Hain. Here. Here. Good. Oh, meet and greet. You know what? We should really do the Pledge of Allegiance for the benefit of those that joined us late. Please join me. Yes. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We actually did that a little earlier for the special meeting for those of you who weren't there, but. I thought we'd give it a second chance here. All right, meet and greet. Uh, we'll start down on the end with our clerk treasurer. <clears throat> Amy Flock, clerk treasurer, County Road P. Tony Haynes, supervisor, Matthew Road. Chuck Tice, I'm still on the Bay Shore. <laughs> Dan Wolfel, chairman, Park Road. Linda White, Bluff Court. John Stavnos, <clears throat> Whitefish Bay Road. Arlene Wolfel, Park Road. Bob Valzon, 
Jim Nolan, resident, 4501 Maury Lane. Katie Ross, Bailey's Harbor, 57. Jim Lundstrom, Peninsula Pulse. Andy Gundrum, Sturgeon Bay. Karen Gundrum, Sturgeon Bay. Steve Johnson, door 44, Sturgeon Bay. John Keel, Whitefish Bureau. Thank you. Okay, the agenda. Amy, was it properly noticed? The agenda has been properly noticed. All right, and I would need a motion to adopt the agenda as is. I so move. Second. Okay, who wants the second? I'll say Linda. Thank <laughs> motion you. by John, second by Linda to adopt the agenda. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Approval of the minutes from the Board of Supervisors meeting from October 16th. I would move to approve the minutes of Monday, October 16th, 2017 of the Board of Supervisors. I'll second that. Motion by Linda, second by John to approve the Board of Supervisors meetings from October 16th. No comments, changes, additions. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. I did skip something here unintentionally, which was public participation. So I will back up. Um, public participation this evening is going to be a little bit different than it has been in the past. Typically, we allow public participation on any topic, with the exception of those items already on the agenda, which we generally give you an opportunity to discuss. As it relates to the Gundrum conditional use permit, there will be no comments from the public with respect to that conditional use. Uh, the discussion will be held tonight strictly by the board, so either the four or those opposed to it. So just so you understand that. If there's anyone else that would like to address an issue other than that, please feel free to do so now. All right, thank you. Okay, pending business, Town Hall well. Chuck? <coughs> We're authorized to move forward with the project. I've contacted uh, Euclid Well Drilling. The uh, process that we're, we're set up to start on Monday. We're going to drill the new well approximately eight feet away from the existing well. It'll be to the east. It's going to be a 300 foot deep well. That's, that's the, the minimum. And, and from that point on, it depends where the good water winds up. You may wind up going deeper. Uh, we're going to drill a 10 inch hole, <coughs> case it with six inch casing, which gives you two inches of grouting all the way around that pipe. Uh, the big problem comes up with drilling that close to the existing well we have to shut down the existing well first because the drilling next to it could cause it to erupt and spew a mud and mess all over the place. So the idea is to shut down for the week of uh, December 4th, 3rd, uh, <clears throat> 3rd through the 9th. That, well, that Sunday is the 3rd, so on the 4th we should start drilling, hopefully be done by the 8th. If not, we've got the weekend to work through yet to get it over. Uh, estimated costs complete with replacing some of the indoor uh, plumbing fixture, uh, the, uh, the pressure tank and that was estimated at $19,615. Some of these items may not need to be replaced, and by drilling as close to the old well as we are planning now, uh, the footage of piping needed to connect on will not be as great as originally in thought, so there will be some savings. Uh, you could get this job done somewhere around 16,000 we're figuring. So, uh, Everything is ready to go. It's the last I heard. So he should be moving in here on Monday or Monday the fourth. Well, hopefully that resolves our well issues, and we don't have to proceed with any further uh, form of 
cleanup, which the DNR may or may not mandate, hopefully the well solves the problem, or it's our understanding <coughs> that the school district next door took basically the same course of action and uh, was successful in eliminating their water problems. So <coughs> we're going to give it our best shot before they come along. Thank you. Um, second thing on the agenda is a town wall, a town hall mural. Uh, this came up at last month's meeting. It's almost, we're going, we're getting close to 10 years since we built this town hall. And we have a huge front entrance and we've been trying to come up with some ideas on what to potentially put there. And I think I, I started it with the idea that maybe we would consider some kind of map on that wall. And so Amy did some homework and found this young lady who's going to talk to us a little bit about a mural on the wall and then we can go kind of go from there. So if you'd like to have the floor, it's yours. Sure, why don't you? Um, we um, have some of these, I don't know if anybody in the audience would like, we have a couple yeah. extras. But I, I can share so if somebody needs one. Mm -hmm. Arlene, you want one? Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Sure, that's good, wherever it's needed. I don't really have a one to reference. Here, here. Here's you have mine. Um, <laughs> How's that? Could you um, state your name again, please? Yes, my name is Katie, Katie. Roth. Um, so I was approached about the mural. Um, and basically, um, the inspiration was a map and some points of interest. So I wasn't really sure on which ones we were highlighting, which points of interest. Um, so I did include different kinds of typography. Um, I imagine, though, for the bigger points of interest, you would prefer some sort of icon. Um, and I also didn't know if you wanted um, maybe a more skewed perspective of the map, so it's more condensed. Um, how, and how big. Yeah, oh, that's what we yeah. are. Those are conversations. Right. Um, um, that's a big wall. It is a big wall. And we have a five to seven year completion on this mural. I mean, in terms of paint, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that how Michelangelo started on this thing with this mural? But I mean, what, we've got a number of ideas. There's some people that have some interest in doing something with some historical photographs and maybe adjoining the map. Maybe the wall is big enough to do the map and put the historical images inside the map where the Institute Saloon picture or you know, sure. some of those things. Mm -hmm. uh, what's, what's a good perspective on that wall? Um, I think as far as the photographs or the, the map, let me assume you use a map as yeah. a base point. Yes, use right. a map. I mean as far as size, I would say probably that's 11. But <laughs> maybe 10, and maybe a welcome to Sebastopol, something next to it as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe not to cover the entire wall, but to maybe give it a little bit of a break. Um, as far as the photos or the older images, I, mm -hmm. I was thinking maybe referencing those using paint instead of maybe the photo, but I'm sure that somehow they you know, so it looked like more of an icon, I guess, unless you wanted the photo on the wall. Like help me with the icon. You mean an image? Of like an image, you try and a simplified image, image of, yeah. Of the yeah. dwelling or whatever. Right, referencing okay. that that photo. You could make it larger, you know, so if you have a huge map and you're looking at something up here, you're not right. trying to look at a photo that's maybe this big, you could have it much more blown up and on the map instead. Okay. So what would your perspective as, as size, uh, you've been out there, you can only get about five feet away from that wall. Right. So when you're looking at a full wall mural, it's, it's going to be real difficult to comprehend what, what you're looking at. Sure. Uh, and would you keep that down to say maybe a 
five by eight or four by eight or something. Yeah. And, and then as we're talking photos, we could put photos around the outside. Yeah, yeah. that would uh, work too. You know, and, uh, you know, you'd have to, how you reference them, <laughs> you know, the, the photo of the Institute Saloon is hanging over here, and, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, the stone quarry is over there, and, uh, so forth. Yeah, so, uh, definitely. Okay. I mean, you could have something to paint them all. Definitely. You wouldn't necessarily paint this on a wall. This would be on a, something we'd hang on the wall, right? Or wrong. That is <coughs> true, too. Yeah, instead of pa painting directly on the wall, yes, you could formulate some, some sort of barrier between the wall. And then you just move mm -hmm. that in so it's removable. And not necessarily those colors right. or those, that was just a first. And I didn't ask, but maybe you just talk to you, what is your background in, in this kind of stuff? Um, I've done a few murals, I've, and but they're more, um, I did one for uh, family services in this large tree, pretty realistic, and then um, I did one for the department. If you wanted a rough idea of what we have for historic photos, mm -hmm. we do have a bunch in our Sebastopol Historical Society files, which are in the file room that I'd be more than happy to sit down with you sometime. We could go through the, you know, if you wanted it in a sepia or black and white or you know, mm -hmm. kind of an old fashioned type look. And yeah, that would be great because then we can really see. Sure. No, okay, so here's here's an old photo of Horn at Stone Quarry Park, mm -hmm. you know, with the horses and the rocks and all that, or, or logging at Whitefish Bay. We have quite a few old photos here. I mean, the downtown Valmy from the old days. Yes, we have the hotel. I mean, there's a lot of unique. And the cherry, the cherry um, factories, mm -hmm. Martin Orchards, and all that. So, mm -hmm. so all these people that are out here, like the Anius Institute, all that, you just Hold them. I just pulled them off. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah. Pretty much. And on an 11 by 17 sheet, we would have really had to have some very, very <laughs> small font sizes in order to do this. Yeah, I considered <coughs> writing them all on there, but I didn't. Yeah. I just wanted to kind of figure out. That's right. I mean, you've given us just the concept, yeah. which is I really what we're looking at. Yes. What, um, what kind of uh, expense or kind of money would you guess something like that might run in just a ballpark? Well, depending on the size. Right. So, I i mean, I was guessing, let's see, if it was, say, 10 hours of work and 40 hours to do it. Um, and it sounds like maybe it would be more simple than what they're thinking, but I'm usually about $40 an hour is what I charge. The idea, but should we have her come back and sit down and try and put together a little bit more refined concept and, and uh, <coughs> yeah. the pictures and the, that kind of stuff? Or is it something you're interested in? Or well, the trouble with putting Valmy and Danny's in my agenda to saloon, you're going to miss somebody. Well, yeah. And then, then that, you know. Sure, but you're talking about more historical points of interest, right? Right. right? Yeah. Right. Not something that's rotating. Yeah, we're not going to try and have an advertisement, but something that people can relate to when they come in and say, oh, here's where I am, something along those lines. Yeah. Anybody? No, no issues? I mean, as far as, go ahead. Can we think about it? Tell them it's meeting time in December? We can. Not, not, a, not an issue with me. Not an issue with me. Okay. Or do you um, plan to come back with something after listening to what we had to say? Sure. I can do that also, if you would like. I mean, the more you can develop the idea, the better it is from my, from my perspective. So I'd okay. be fine with that. And, and, I, and I don't have any uh, issue with paying you for some of your time. Sure. So I don't mm -hmm. expect you to be, you know, gratis. But, okay. um, you know, 
if you can develop the idea a little further along and bring it back to us in December and again look at the wall and decide what you think is the right kind of sizing and things, that would be great. Okay. We could work with that. That sounds good. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll do that in December and just keep Amy abreast of what's up and if you need some ideas, suggestions, or whatever, we'll go from there. No, you can't. Can I trust you? Yeah. Can you use that here? No. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Do you have a contact yes. number or card? Yes. Thank you. Okay, good. Thanks, Katie. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. So we'll bring that back in December and see where we go with it. Uh, next item is property management action update. Chuck, you want to take us through that? <coughs> response, uh, people cleaning up their yards, uh, the ones that we did talk to, uh, a lot of them request a little more time or, or assistance in taking care of some of the matters that everybody has uh, shown some type of compliance or, or heading toward that direction. Uh, some of the other ones we're coming up with, uh, we have a dilapidated building that needs to be removed. Uh, the party is not in the position to do such. So uh, what we're looking at now is, is maybe that the town would take this building down at our expense and then place that cost on the tax roll and recoup it in that manner. So uh, what I am looking for right now is some direction from the board here as to whether or not we should move forward with that uh, situation, realizing that the town may have to pick up that tab to start with. Uh, if we do not feel as though we want to do that, there would be no issue in pursuing this matter any further. How big a building is it? We'd be looking at between three to five thousand uh, dollars. That mainly depends on what kind of scrap price or uh, what materials may be salvageable from the destruction and, and uh, what could be sold. So. Well, what if what if there's an underground tank or anything <coughs> that we could get involved with? You know, there could be a lot of stuff, asbestos, anything in there. What we're looking at, the septic system's already been taken out, the power's already been taken out. Uh, we would have to deal with uh, the well, which uh, we don't have to close the well, but we have to cap it so that contaminants cannot get down it. Uh, other than that, it's just take the building down, clean up the mess. As far as we know, there are no underground facilities in the area. So. The only question I have is, uh, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, well, the preferred course of action would probably be to get the property owner's consent right. to do this. Okay. There's However, a whole procedure to follow, yes. and that would be the start of it. But once you start that, you're going to continue it. Mm -hmm. So I, I, and mm -hmm. what I mentioned earlier, the situation that the property owner is in, he does not have the wherewithal to do this. Right. So if we start this and he cannot do it, we become liable for it. Mm -hmm. So I said if we're not going to can, you know, move forward once, once the door is open, we might as well not open the door. Well, if he can't so. pay for it 
if he can't pay for it now and you put it on his taxes, then he isn't going to be able to pay his taxes. Somebody else is paying the taxes. The taxes are up to date. Uh, <clears throat> so if they wish to retain the property, they would take care of it. And they would be contacted before the action actually moves forward. And they'd given the opportunity to do it on their own mm -hmm. before we move forward. And the question I have is, are we, uh, would we be setting a precedent that if something else comes along? Uh, you know, where would this money come from, from the money that we have sitting in that? Well, that'd account? come out of the park's budget. Park, park budget, yeah, <laughs> here we go again. Yeah. Money. No, that was the, the, yeah. fi the 15,000 that we have in the budget for this type of action, right. uh, legal action and uh, moving forward on, on the remediations. Yeah. Uh, like I said, we're, I don't want to pursue this if we're going to drop it. Right. So I want to make sure everything is in order. And like I said, my first line is going to be to contact the property owners with the last uh, efforts here. And if not, then the town is going to do it for him. But the town would be recouping that investment down the road. Right. Do we have any idea what his property taxes are on that parcel? No. I can't envision it being much. Less than $300 or something? Minnesota. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's kind of my take. I mean, it's in a rural area. Um, I guess the, the big question, <clears throat> whether it's three, four, or five, is uh, if we take this on, assuming that we take the appropriate steps, contact the owner, deal with the fire chief, sanitarian, whomever else we need to contact to make sure you know our ducks are in a row, for lack of a better word, um, that will take, a, roughly right, a third of what we have in there for enforcement on other properties. And I guess as the chairman of that committee, I guess I have to ask you, does that leave you enough to do the other things that you need to do, or by focusing on this, does it inhibit the bigger picture? I don't have a frame of reference one way or the other, but just enough that we don't short circuit our efforts on the other things that you, you think may or may not be of the same or more value to address. So, well, from the board's perspective, I thought this was one of the major concerns. It's it's not the major one in the town. Uh, like I said, I would. Uh, like to see this one go forward and if everything works properly and and uh, you know we get cooperation in that then we move to the next one uh, there are only a handful of these real problems in the town and if we can get a good start on them uh, you know the people don't want these places either but they just can't afford to clean them up so here you know it's going at it from a different perspective, if you will. Uh, you hate to say the town is helping them, but the town will recoup the money. So, we got a question on the floor, Dan. Yes. Is this property a health hazard, safety issue to the town itself, town's people? Could be. It's, it's becoming a health issue the fact that the building is abandoned, it's got vermin living in it now, it does not appeal to the neighbors, and there is a possibility that the well could be contaminated if it continues to go the way it is. Uh, so the well could be contaminated, so if the town board decides to step on this property, level the place or whatever you're going to do with it, whose liability is well if you guys disturb the building and cause contamination or that person causes contamination in that well. The, the, I think you guys are, are going way, way overboard here. I think because the neighbors are, are mad because it looks bad, I, I think the person that owns the property should probably clean it up himself before you start spending 
well, our tax that dollars. Is the original hope. I mean, well, we're going to pursue it from that standpoint. You're discussing a three to five thousand dollar removal. <clears throat> I can tell you right off the top of my head, if it resembles a house trailer or any kind of home, you're about five thousand light. Because you guys don't quite understand what, what's left in the house trailers. And as far as scrap value, there's nothing there. So I, I, I think you're three to five thousand is kind of light. And I really hate to see you guys going to something that's going to cost us ten. Well, the, the, the estimate that I got through a reputable company, and we went out and we looked at it, we went through everything that needs to be done there, and that's the way it came out. So I think the property management committee is really kind of stepping way overstepping their bones. Way overstepping them. Okay, how does the board feel in terms of where we want to go with this? <clears throat> well, we had Attorney Nesbitt out at our last meeting. He explained this, the, uh, there's really two processes that we can follow, either the special charges right. route or the civil suit. Special charges, um, you know, if you're going to place $3,000, $4,000, $5,000 as a special charge on a small tax bill to begin with, the likelihood is probably that they're going to let it go into default with delinquent taxes. And then after three years, it'll get auctioned off to the highest bidder. I think we would be satisfied with our special charges because I believe real estate taxes and special charges come off the top. So we're covered that way. Um, but it does involve attorney's fees. And depending on the response of the property owner, they could be nominal or they could be dragged out for a year or two. Like I said, the best hope is to get cooperation from the property owner. And which we have not at this point contacted, correct? Correct. Right. Okay. So that would be the first step, I believe, would be to formal contact with the property owner in writing, document the steps and such, correct? Oh, I, I tend to agree. I think mm -hmm. we could postpone this, this part of the discussion until such time as you've had initial contact with the owner to see where they see where they are, although I think we know the answer, but I think we'd be better suited if we at least understood their perspective on it and then bring it back in December and decide based on the feedback from that where we want to go with it. There will be nothing to report in December because it won't move that fast. Well, you'll you be need attorney paperwork, you need everything else. So. Okay. Even for the initial phone contact? It doesn't have a phone. Oh, okay. Well, then we'll have to use the mails. All right. Well, I think we should roll with it for 30, 60 days until such time as we've had at least some feedback from the owner and then decide whether we're going to take the course of action or not, see what's up. I don't have a problem with it other than that, but I think we'd like to do that first. Well, Go ahead. Unless Supervisor Tice has sees some urgency that you see some urgency that maybe the rest of us aren't aware of? The only urgency I see is that uh, we drove past this thing 12 years in a row, and I've got the same thing back every year. Let's get something done about it. So do it or don't do it. No, I don't disagree with us taking some action. I just think we might want to just have contact with that owner and get their perspective on it so at least we know what we're... Okay. up against to begin with and then bring it back and decide whether we're going to do it or not. Um, so I'm open to anybody else's suggestion. That's just my own. Well, I think, yeah, you should contact the owner and see, you know, what's what. Maybe he'll have a change of heart and say, okay, I'll take care of it, but doubt it. But yeah, I mean, I think know. we know the foregone conclusion, but I think I'd like to at least hear Give that Give him first. that option. Yeah. Tony, any comments? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> if, if like what Chuck says, 12 years you've been driving past it and talking about it and notifying and nothing's happened, we, we've got to do something. We wait another couple of months. What good's it going to do? We're going to be <clears throat> sitting here again talking about it. I would think uh, 
if we can get the tax money, you know, get the money out of them on the taxes, go ahead and get, you know, contact the owners and whatever paying the taxes and tell them here's what's happening. We're going to knock it down and clean it up. Well, I think that's what we're basically saying. But, you know, we keep another two or three <clears> months from now, we, you know, we keep putting it on. Well, you're thinking what we should do is contact them again. I think we should contact the owner as a starting point, and then if, if we get the answer we anticipate that we're going to get, then we can make a decision knowing what, what we're up against. Um, I just hate to make the commitment to do that until we at least had a conversation with the owner. And I agree with what Chuck said. It's been a problem, so. Amongst many of our others. So. Let's go back, Chuck, and at least try and make contact with the owner and see what's up, whether we have to go through Randy to do that or you directly or a combination of above. And as soon as we know more, we'll put it back on the agenda and figure out whether we'll take that action with it or not. All right, anyone else? Okay. So we'll bring that back as soon as it's... <coughs> okay, new business. Review and adoption of the 2018 budget resolution establishing a tax rate for 2017 to be collected in 2018. So you have this resolution in your packet. Resolution number 5, 2017 TB, to establish a tax rate for 2017 to be collected in 2018. And I'll just read through this. Whereas a tax levy of 600 $58,784 was adopted at the special town meeting held on November 27, 2017, in accordance with Section 60 10, Paragraph 1, Paragraph A of the Wisconsin Statutes, and whereas the levy supports the 2018 budget as previously submitted and/or amended at such hearing held pursuant to Section 65.90 of the Wisconsin Statutes with total expenditures of $1,126,437, and whereas in accordance with Section 60.40, Paragraph 4 of the Wisconsin Statutes, the Town Board adopted the 2018 Town Budget on November 27, 2017. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the tax mill rate in support of such a levy and the budget be established at 0 0.928380 for the year 2017 to be collected in 2018 based on the final statement of assessment for 2017 with an aggregate assessed value of $709,606,100. So the motion would be in order to adopt. I make a motion to adopt uh, resolution 05 2017 TB. I will second that motion. Motion by John, second by Linda to adopt resolution number 5 2017 TB. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Okay, this is more of an FYI, notice of spring election. Uh, two of our supervisors uh, will be up for re-election in April of 2018. Uh, so notice public notice that uh, Supervisor John Stavenis and Supervisor Chuck Tice, uh, they can circulate their papers beginning of December 1st, and final filing date for nominations is 5 p.m. on Tuesday, January 2nd. Uh, the primary, if need be, will be held on February 20th. And if an incumbent office holder is not intending to seek re-election, they may declare their non-candidacy by Monday, December 22nd at 5 p.m. <coughs> and nomination papers can be obtained from the town clerk, Amy Flock. Okay. Another one, just as an FYI, we have renewed the agreement with Mark Richards for uh, animal control. Uh, I did have an opportunity at a recent meeting to talk to a couple of the other chairmen uh, with respect to his services. And basically, all I've heard from them uh, were good things. No one had any issues with the, the coverage he provided. And basically, they're all on the same page as what <clears throat> when we started with him 
what, three, four years ago, maybe more, five now. Mm -hmm. So we did renew that contract uh, and uh, more information only. Uh, meeting schedule for 2018. <coughs> I know we always have some flex in there. <coughs> uh, this is a draft, so uh, I will bring it back next month. Take a look at it, see if you have any conflicts. Please touch base with me or Amy so that we can tweak this and hopefully get it put to bed in our December meeting. Uh, road inspection, we'll always leave that in flux until we get closer to the date. Same thing with the budget work session to accommodate changes in schedule. But otherwise, uh, these would be the tentative dates. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, that brings us to the next item on the agenda, which is the Andrew and Karen Gundrum uh, conditional use permit for the winery and farm market. And as I mentioned earlier when I started the meeting, uh, we will not be taking any testimony or any input from anyone in the audience this evening. Uh, I did consult with the town attorney on this matter as well. And we have basically covered 99% of all the information uh, at prior meetings with respect to this. There is one additional piece of information <coughs> that is highlighted in your packet, and this was a result of uh, an output from the RPC decision where Ken Fisher indicated to the Gundrums that one of the reasons he made a decision to vote against it was because of his concern over loss of farmland. So the Gundrums went out and had their land uh, checked by a soil specialist, and there's a report in there basically saying to uh, anyone who reads through it that the soil there is not that great to begin with and uh, it's not the finest soil in Door County and therefore the concern that Ken Fisher might have had was probably not as great as Ken anticipated. Um, in our situation, soil uh, was never any of our conversation and never came up as an issue as to whether or not um, the soil or any impact our issues were more related to the neighbors concerns issues uh, regarding size uh, traffic everything else soil was never one of our concerns so knowing that going in uh, that's the reason I've limited the discussions to the town board so what we'll do is discuss this amongst ourselves and we will take a vote to either support this uh, going forward to the Board of Adjustment or to not support it and send that off to the county. So with that as a backdrop, you have the packet. If there's something in there that you feel you want to address or talk further about, please feel free to do so. Um, but I don't believe the soil, at least for our discussion, has any, uh, any merit in, based on anything we've discussed in the past. Okay, any questions with respect to that? No, I think you hit it on the head. Uh, the reason I'm against it is because it has nothing to do with the soil life. Again, I <clears throat> think it should be put in the designated areas according to the comprehensive plan. Yeah, they, didn't, they didn't change the size of the building or anything, um, and that was a big concern. So, all the other points you've hit on. I don't know. Linda, any comments? Sure. <laughs> I thought maybe you might have one. <clears throat> the zoning change, we started this with a request for a zoning change from prime egg to general egg. That zoning change, it was approved, it recommended approval by the plan commission, it recommended approval by the town board, and it was accepted and approved by the RPC. So the zoning change did happen. At the time the zoning change was requested, it was disclosed that the intent was to construct a winery slash farm market. Okay. This, now that the property has been zoned general egg, a winery farm market is an allowable use with a conditional use permit. And a conditional use permit means you can obtain a permit subject to conditions. 
Those conditions were outlined in the uh, letter from the County of Door, the Land Use Services Department that summarized the RPC hearing, 12 conditions. I was at that hearing and to the best of my knowledge, the applicants agreed to apply to every one of those conditions. Um, and I truly believe that the neighbors with some compromise, be it on the building or setbacks or fencing or whatever, I think this is workable among the neighbors. And another point, it's not a new business coming into our town. It's the same business moving to a different location. So those are the points, I guess. Oh, and also a conditional use permit is not subject to what a comprehensive <clears throat> plan might have in mind. So. Okay. Chuck, any comments? <clears throat> no comments. Tony, anything else? Well, my only, uh, I'm only bringing up old stuff, but <clears throat> I believe that it never would have if we would have gotten the information out to the neighbors, I know it wasn't our problem, but it was the county's. The neighbors would have known about the first plan commission meeting to change the zoning. I don't think it would have flew because we would have had neighbors that are not wanting to do it. But the neighbors were never informed until the, right before the town board meeting. So, <clears throat> I, uh, again, my vote would be not to have it. All right. Well, my take on it is uh, I've been involved in the meetings. I've been to the RPC hearing. Um, I tried to negotiate uh, what I thought was an agreeable solution, perhaps, between both parties. I was disappointed that uh, that was not something that we were able to do. I was further disappointed by the fact that, although I understand from a financial perspective why you wanted to take the action that you did, um, I was disappointed that that happened and we were unable to get together as a group knowing that if in fact your building was approved at either the RPC or Board of Adjustment, that anything that we might have negotiated um, did not necessarily need to happen because you would not have had any requirements, uh, nothing there that would have made you follow through. Um, I have felt the size uh, as an issue. It's almost uh, two, and a, two and a quarter, two and a half times the size of this building and the location. Uh, and, and we discussed that at the meeting a few months, weeks back about potential redesign with your builder who came from Keller. Um, so I, I personally am not in support of it. It's taken me a while to get to that point in time, but uh, that's where I feel it is at this point in time and in my mind. Um, and really all that's left here, if, unless someone has further discussion, is to make a motion to decide whether you want to support it or not. And um, I'll leave it at that. So I'll, I'll make a motion to recommend to the RPC not to support it. Board of Adjustments. Board of Adjustments. To not to recommend? Correct. I second that. Okay, we have a motion from John, a second from Tony to not support the conditional use to the Board of Adjustment. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. Aye. The ayes have it. Okay, thank you. So we will do the paperwork and send it on to the Board of Adjustment. Mr. Yes. Could I request that the vote be recorded? The nay and the aye. Yes, it is. Thank you. Okay. Next on the agenda is just more of a note. I know I talked with Amy about a town Christmas tree. I guess at some point in time, I forgot the dates, Amy. You're going to do one here in town? Linda in the, is yes. going to go get one the, tomorrow. The town hall Christmas tree is coming tomorrow and will be decorated on Wednesday. Okay, so if anyone in, in 
the audience or at home is interested in coming in and participating in that activity? Absolutely. I don't know. I'm not sure what time it will be, but. Contact Amy and she will, she will keep you in the loop, right? Yes. Um, with, res with respect to the, uh, the tree down on the park, we have had such bad luck with the lights over there. <laughs> to say the least. My suggestion, uh, I leave it up to you, but my suggestion is that we take the Christmas tree out front, which has now reached 20-some mm -hmm. feet, and we place 2,700,000 lights on that tree, light or whatever, light it up. And um, also we have a couple trees that are leafless, mm -hmm. where we could do some decorating there. Yeah. And, uh, and we have the sign, etc., and move everything down, and we have a gentleman that has a truck. So. Um, if there's a date, which is what, what I'd like to do, is just if there's a time, a date that people feel you got a few minutes you want to spend, let's just put it on a calendar and, and try and get it done. Um, and I guess I'll, I'll say John, because I think we could probably still use it, huh? The truck. So what works for you? Maybe start there. Whatever. It doesn't matter. I'll just, okay. I just tell my boss <laughs> that it's, uh, you know, are you going for to the, take for all the, the lights out of another tree? I, for the public, mm -hmm. I can if you want me to. I'd like them cleaned up that look shabby. Well, I think you will have to take that out of the park's budget, too. Yeah, we, I thought about that. I was thinking maybe we should try and pull, pull them out. Pull them out, yeah. And see what's up. Um, huh? Are you talking about the wasp Oh, the Christmas tree lights. In the Can you even notice them? Yeah, oh. well, the problem is... is there yes. might be some that we could actually reuse, but the, I don't know, that tree them. gets beat up so badly. You with just the put a chain on and drag them off the tree. Well, we might do that, too. Um, any particular day? What's that? Any particular mm -hmm. day that you want to well, try I'm and do this? I'm kind of tied up every Saturday in December. Okay. So do we want to try... Um, during the week? Pardon me? We could try it during the week. Yeah, you want to try... Um, I don't care. We could do this Friday. We could do. Oh, this Friday won't work. Oh. Plus, it's a much smaller tree, so yeah. I don't. Oh, that's when we got to get the lights and the rest. Do you want to do um, what day works for you, John? Give us a date and we'll work backwards. Is there a um, day that's better or worse? <clears throat> we can do it in the afternoon. <clears throat> then you don't have to worry about trucking back and forth. That's fine. I, um, I don't. I'll be gone till. Um, Saturday, Sunday, so, but then we're into December already, so. The fourth work? Yeah, as far as I know, yes. I will make sure that. I should be back to work by then. Monday? <laughs> December. That's going to be drilling the well. Is that going to screw that up? What time are we? Um, I, don't I don't know if that <laughs> works. Should, that shouldn't really well, bother us. any running water here, so. which we don't need. Oh, yeah. We can run over to school. Over the truck's <coughs> got antifreeze in it already. It's good. <laughs> Let's, noon? Sure. Let's say noon on the on Monday, December 4th. Goody, goody, I don't have to work that day. And I'll work with Amy to make sure we got lights. <clears throat> and if we need to pull them off first, we'll do that. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, okay. Ordinance resolutions. Okay, this came back from uh, last meeting. Uh, this is resolution number 4, 2017 TB. This is establishing a designated fund for the enforcement of Sebastopol Town ordinances as it relates to public nuisance and <coughs> regulation of out of sight, outside storage. Sorry, my reading's bad today. Chuck? Basically, it's just a rewrite. We find down specifically from. stating <coughs> ordinance 01-2011 and 02-2011. So when we had this last month, it was too all-encompassing, and so we just refined it, or I should say mm -hmm. Chuck refined it down to specific issues. So I'm cool with that. Um, all we would need then is a motion to approve. <coughs> I move to approve resolution number 0.04-2017 TB. I'll second it. Motion by Tony, second by Chuck to approve resolution number 4, 2017 TB, establishing a designated fund for enforcement of Sevespool Town 
ordinances. Uh, any further discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Okay, thank you. All right. Next item is financial reports, and in front of you, you have the fund balances through October 31st. <coughs> Transaction list by date of the month of October. You have the budget versus actual January through October of 2017. Budget as an actual as amended. And if anyone has any questions, our clerk treasurer is prepared to answer them. Hearing none, she may share some comments of her own. Amy? We received our last portion of the 2017 shared revenues last week. We currently are above budget in our cable franchise income, our building permit income, town hall rental income, and videography income. And we have not yet received our reimbursement from the county for their portion of the Whitefish Bay Creek Bridge, but I did send out an email, and it looks like it will be attended to tomorrow. Oh, great. That's it. Okay. Any other comments on, from anyone with respect to that? Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you, Amy. Okay. Uh, approval of vouchers, bills, and claims. Has everybody signed off on that? I mm -hmm. think Tony was solid. Yeah, I did. <coughs> yes, sir. Okay. I'll move that we approve vouchers, bills, and claims October 17, 2017 through November 27 of 2017. I'll okay. second that. Okay, motion by Chuck, second by Tony to approve vouchers, claims, and bills October 17th through November 27. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Oral committee, commission reports, minutes, etc. You have in front of you the property management committee minutes from October 2nd and the plan commission meeting minutes from September 14th. Any discussion on those? We will put those on file. And does anyone have any added comments? Are there any oral committee reports? The only one I have would be the uh, the dam committee. 8.525 today. <clears throat> Clean the grates this morning. It's right where it's supposed to be this okay. time of year. Good to know. Thank you, Tony. All right. Uh, license and permits. You have uh, the safe built building permits and the town zoning permits, building permits in front of you. Looks like we're back to a lot of detached garages and <laughs> regular shaped boathouses and other wonderful <coughs> things. I think only one house. So hopefully that changes next month. They talk about housing going crazy everywhere else on the news. So hopefully that happens here. Um, then we have county board report from Supervisor Linda Waite of District 14. Linda? All right. On November 11th, the Door, the Door County Board of Supervisors approved a budget with uh, revenues of 48. I'll just round these off to nice, nice uh, sounding numbers. Uh, so the 2018 budget, revenues of, 28, of 48 million. Expenditures of 77 million, resulting in a tax levy of almost 29 million dollars. So that um, equates to a mill rate of four dollars and 12 and a half cents, which is up just six cents from last year. Um, also included in that budget was about 16 miles of county highway that our highway department will be completing, um, and Glidden Drive is among one of those. And let's see, the, um, we did make application for a local road improvement program, and I'm waiting to hear back from our Door County Highway Commissioner on a date. Um, most of the towns did submit application for that. Uh, the next meeting of the County Board is Tuesday, December 19th at 10 a.m. instead of 9 a.m. And um, I think that's about it. 
Thank you, Linda. You're welcome. Leaves us with a winding down of the meeting. We're down to correspondence. Just a couple things that you need to be aware of. One is you have in front of you the Door County Highway Department call-in list. So if you have a town person, a constituent who is concerned about their highways or roads or snow removal, there's a list of the individuals that are on call for each week. <clears throat> so feel free to call them. And if somebody wants to call in and has an issue, they can't contact their supervisor, just call Amy and she will call those people up and get them out there right away. <clears throat> also, you have a copy from the, uh, of the Door County Coastal Byways, a letter to the town just talking about uh, the successes and what some of their goals and achievements are. But uh, it says here that, uh, and I thought I'd highlight it, we'd like to share the following successes and some goals for the coming year. The Door County Coastal Byway placed number two in Wisconsin Department of Tourism's 2017 Best Fall Drives. So obviously that has to be led by our kiosk. I think it's the best looking one in this county anyhow. Um, so at any rate, nice job there. City of Sturgeon Bay has its usual fire uh, department report. Uh, then there is from the land use services, the zoning issues as it relates to a recreational park that's been kind of uh, halfway started on Walker Road. And the fact that they now have to regulate that or cease uh, their action. Um, tourism board, I talked a little bit about this on the uh, budget hearing, the changes that are taking place for the collection of room tax that's in there, as well as the um, permitted residences and the new short-term <coughs> rental law. There's a document in there that talks about how long you can rent or not rent before you have to have a permit, some steps to take. Rural Insurance is pleased to let us know they have a nurse hotline. I'm going to be but you got to get hurt to use it. For me? you got to get hurt to use You've it. You've got to get hurt to use it. This is different than any of the other ones. When you call and you tell them you're hurt, they will say, call 911, and then they hang up. Um, so that's in there. It's a great service. Final estimate of our population, uh, 2,691 people, as the state has told us we have of which 2,059 are eligible to vote. Mm -hmm. um, then there's a little packet in here that talks about uh, this is, this is uh, Laddie's favorite thing, the uh, UPS that sits in his room, the un un uninterruptible power supply. They came in here. It turned out we had some recall activity. They came in, took care of it, found that the machine is running perfect, which is good news. Good. Um, I think Amy mentioned the fact that we received our last payment of 38000 from the state for shared revenue. Uh, notice of public hearings for the RPC. And that's everything that we have. So, announcements consist of the office being closed the 4th through the 8th for the well drilling. However, we'll be there putting up Christmas lights. Board of Supervisors meeting December 18th. <coughs> there was a discussion that Amy was trying to accommodate her children at the school concert, but apparently I think we're she staying with up. the original date. Is we that, are. We are? Yes. So, Laddie, would you stop taping our meeting, go over, <laughs> tape her son's section, and then come back? <laughs> cool. okay. She would greatly appreciate that. Uh -huh. We will both be there Tuesday night. We will Mr. both Chairman. be there. The, uh, the uh, stipulations in the uh, comprehensive plan meeting, are they going to be forwarded to the uh, um, Board of Adjustments too? Because we have to fill out another worksheet, right? The criteria. Right. Yeah, okay. it'll go to the Board of Adjustment. Just, uh, just as if it had been a conditional use request and start, get going. Okay. <coughs> so the ones from our minutes set. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. I'll look at that before from we send minutes? it to from our from our minutes here, from the comprehensive from the plan that Linda took. Oh. From your comprehensive plan, that'll go. That basically the same document's going to be reiterated and okay. sent back, but this time, instead <clears throat> of no recommendation, it will have a recommendation on there. By the town board. By the town board. Yeah, I mean, last time when we sent it to the RPC, it was the recommendation of the committee. The town mm -hmm. board did not take action. Right. 
This one will yeah. be the recommendation of the committee, or the recommendation of the town board, excuse me. Okay. Too many towns. Okay. Agenda items for next month, depending on timing, we will be bringing back um, Chuck's request with respect to property management. Um, we will bring back the agenda meeting schedule. Is there anything else that... The mural. Ah, uh, yes, the mural. Thank you. Anything else anyone needs to add? Is the December meeting still the 18th? Yes. yes. We're going to stay with the 18th. Okay, the last item on the agenda would be someone's desire to make a motion to adjourn. adjourn. Motion by Chuck. Second. Second by John to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We are adjourned. Mm -hmm.